Well, this is getting kind of overused. So, dear Glenn, would you be so nice and please go and fuck yourself. Thanks in advance. <laughs> Line 6 Pod HD 500. The device that I purchased immediately after it appeared on the market and the concept that I was looking for all these years. This device contains uh, multiple uh, amp simulations and a bunch of storm boxes. You can plug it directly into PA or your recording device and you are ready to rock. And after I purchased it I was more than happy. But after using it for a while, I figured out that this wasn't quite uh, the best sounding equipment ever. Uh, so, basically, if you play it on its own, it kind of sounds cool. But as soon as you try to make a record with it, you figure out that it doesn't uh, quite sound good in a mix. So, I wasn't an uh, experienced sounding engineer, and I was trying to figure out what went wrong with uh, this device. I was frustrated because I purchased some device to get the job easily done and it didn't uh, do this job at all. And if you play guitar through Line 6 Pod HD, you might actually like the sound, but as soon as you try to bring this uh, kind of guitar sound in a mix, you see how boring and uh, lifeless this sounds. And after playing with it for a while, I figured out that the recreations of the guitar cabinets uh, is one of the worst uh, ever made. And so what did I do? I purchased this torpedo cap device made by uh, French uh, factory two nodes. And I connected it to Line 6 uh, port HD and disconnected the original uh, uh, guitar cabinet emulation and this immediately improved the sound. To demonstrate the difference between decent guitar equipment and Line 6 Pod HD, I used my instrumental track Deja Vu that is on my YouTube channel as well. One example is recorded with decent guitar equipment and two other examples are recorded with uh, Line 6 Pod HD with its own cabinet uh, recreation and uh, with Line 6 Pod HD with the torpedo gap from two notes. <laughs>
As you can see, you can get pretty decent guitar sound if you use Line 6 Pod HD and some uh, third-party impulse responses. But first of all, this doesn't belong to the concept of the single all-in-one devices. And uh, second, I wasn't quite satisfied with the sound of the results that I've got. And I stopped using the uh, Pod uh, HD 500 after I purchased this super secret but super awesome uh, guitar pre-amplifier that I use with the torpedo cap as well. But this is a topic for my next episode. And in the meantime, I want to talk about a couple of good things that I found by Line 6 Pod HD 500. And these are stock boxes uh, recreation, no matter if this is uh, overdrive or distortion or delay or chorus, it uh, is done pretty decent. So, you can actually use uh, your tube uh, amplifier as usual and uh, use uh, Line 6 Pod HD as your pedal board. And this uh, gets uh, really decent results without uh, having the huge uh, pedal boards with all these uh, connections. There was a time when I actually tried to give a second chance to a Line 6 Pod HD 500 as a replacement for my pedal board, but this didn't quite work as well. Not because there was something wrong with the sound. My basic two devices are super secret pre-amplifier and speaker simulator torpedo cap by two nodes. I can play the whole set using only these two devices. All this, the rest uh, are the add-ons. I need to connect these two devices to a PA at some point, that's why I use the iBox. I also need guitar tuner in my pedal board. I can't imagine life without delay and on some rare occasions I use overdrive to boost the signal. And of course I need power supply for all these devices. And this is basically my whole rig. And even if I add a couple of things uh, like chorus or wow which I barely use, this uh, pedal board uh, takes less space than the uh, whole port HD 500. Of course you get advantage with the uh, port HD that you don't have uh, all these multiple cables. Uh, but, on the other hand, the one thing that I hate about all these digital devices, instead of turning one knob to change one parameter, you have to bring up the menu, then select function, then change the parameter, then maybe save the preset, and I don't have time uh, during sound check for all these multiple steps. And in conclusion, what have I learned from all this experience? First of all, you don't have to trust commercial videos or sponsored content. I remember how frustrated I was uh, trying to get exactly the same sound that I heard in these videos and I thought maybe I'm doing something wrong. But it turned out that uh, there was nothing wrong with me, it was something wrong uh, with Pod HD 500. And that's what basically inspired me to start my own gear review show. I didn't know back then that there is a guy in Canada who does exactly the same thing. And unfortunately, I saw his review on Pod HD two years after I purchased my device. This could uh, help me to save some money and a lot of frustration. Second thing, Pod HD 500 is still a powerful tool, but as long as you use it as a pedal board replacement. It has a really nice uh, Stormbox recreation, but don't use it for its uh, guitar amp uh, simulations. Third, Thing. If you already own uh, this kind of device and you insist it on using it, just uh, at least uh, don't use uh, it uh, cabinet emulation. Uh, use some uh, third-party uh, impulse responses. This uh, can really improve your sound. And the fourth thing, well, Glenn mentioned in a couple of videos that he would uh, still prefer uh, use the usual uh, tube guitar amplifiers uh, while playing small gigs in a clubs because uh, you can't rely on uh, the sound engineer there that you probably are not paying for and you don't know if you get some good sound on stage uh, so here is the answer get your own uh, stage monitor this is pretty light and uh, you can uh, connect it to the line output of uh, your modeling devices, no matter if it's Line 6 or Camper or some other devices. And uh, you are independent uh, from the sound guy in a small club and this is more transportable than 4x12 box. 
And at the end of the video I would like to mention a couple of things where I sort of disagree with Glenn. I totally understand uh, his old-school way of uh, producing music and recording the electric guitars, where he would uh, grab the uh, tube guitar amplifier and mic up the cabinet. I really like also that he doesn't uh, insist uh, that this is uh, the only way to record the electric guitar. However, once in a while he mentions that a lot of people are using exactly the same preset, and that's why everything uh, sounds uh, the same today, and at this point I would like to disagree with him. Well, let's uh, go back to the 70s or maybe early 80s. Well, back then, uh, most of the time, uh, people would use uh, the only Marshall amplifier, and uh, they would uh, use one of two existing electric guitars, uh, either it was uh, Fender or Gibson. But, if you take a look at uh, Richie Blackmore, he doesn't uh, quite sound exactly the same as Ingvi Malmsteen, uh, even if he uses uh, the same uh, kind of equipment. And both of those guitar players don't uh, sound the same as uh, Rory Gallagher. And I can mention uh, Randy Rhodes and Jimmy Page and Slash, who actually used uh, uh, the similar guitars or similar amplifiers. You can speculate that each uh, amplifier sounds slightly differently and uh, marking up the cabinet uh, might uh, make a huge difference. But uh, my point is, the whole variety of the music uh, back in those days was not because uh, there was a sort of uh, different equipment, but people had their different uh, music ideas and uh, rock and roll and uh, rock music was new and everybody was trying to explore it and create uh, their own uh, style, their own sound. And what kind of genre it was, uh, this was kind of a task of the critics to find out. And uh, I think what problem with modern music is that a lot of kids are trying to copy uh, some of their favorite guitar play and they trying to recreate exactly the same thing that is uh, already existing. And so there are lack of new ideas. And that's why uh, all the music sounds uh, the same today. And I don't uh, blame the equipment that we have. Uh, for me, it's really lack of music ideas or lack of uh, new ideas. And I don't think that modeling technology is something uh, that uh, has to do with it. Maybe uh, that a lot of people use it as a shortcut but uh, this is sort of a topic for the autotune and not the topic of uh, why all the music sounds the same. And I guess that's all for today. Have a nice day, keep on rocking, yeah, yeah, and fuck you, Glenn.